baseball game, you have a seventh inning stretch, but we're ready for our seventh segment, the seventh inning with Coach Woody Hunt. Here in Shelby, North Carolina, general manager running that, uh, uh, I, I get rookie ball team. Uh, it was it was long, long A ball. Long A ball. And Mickey Inglitz left and gone to the University of St. Louis. Well, I, no, I, I came back and worked for Mickey another okay. year. I'll tell you that story. Right, what, 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 well, what did we do? Is, oh, Harry Frank was here. I forgot about Harry. Well, he was here before Mickey took over. Yeah, okay. So I miss Harry okay. completely. But I was in Shelby and uh, – uh, uh, we knew that, that, that Briggs was going to sell the sell the club. I knew that that I had to do something. But anyway, Keith Madison uh, uh, let me come as a volunteer to the University of Kentucky, and Keith's great great guy. I'm still really good friends with him, and so I was at the volunteer uh, with with Kentucky, and they were trying to figure out some way that they could pay me, and and I was working on that, but didn't stay long enough to get that to happen. So I came, I came to, to Vanderbilt on a recruiting trip with John Butler, the assistant coach at, at, at the university at that time, who is now one of the compliance officers. I think he may be retired by now. But we came together and we stayed at Keith Madison's uh, brother's house down in Franklin somewhere. And we went recruiting at Vanderbilt. And I was recruiting Cumberland players for, that, for the University of Kentucky. Kevin Lentz, uh, Newberry, and that bunch yeah. had a very good team. Well, I uh, got to talk to Mickey and, and all that, and uh, uh, Mickey mentioned something about me coming back, and that, and uh, but I, I saw Cumberland play with other teams, and uh, when I saw Cumberland play, Tommy, uh, I got I got homesick a little bit. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but had a had a feeling that I needed, I wanted to come back. Uh, and even in Shelby, I would get homesick for Cumberland and for Lebanon. Yeah. And, uh, and not in a bad way, but uh, my goal was then to, to was develop a professional career, either as a general manager or a scout or whatever I could do for Pittsburgh. My goal was that. Yeah. And then it all changed, you know. And so I went to the University of Kentucky and stayed a month or six weeks or two months. I don't know exactly the length of time. So I would come and play Mickey asked me if I wanted to come back. Well, come back for basically no money again, for the same money I was getting, I guess. So, uh, and we were struggling financially, and my family was, we had, I had no money. I had no job. Uh, my wife has had to work, get a job to assist. We lived with her parents. And so I was in a little bit of a turmoil. My dad was not happy with me at that point because, you know, he likes to, people that work, Sure. You know, and so we survived some way, somehow. And then Mickey offered me the job to come back as assistant coach with the hope maybe of getting a head coach. And that's that was the only time that, that a head coach ever mentioned to me.
So I came back and spent a year as assistant coach uh, with Mickey, and then he left that summer to go to University of St. Louis, and that's when I started to be the head coach here. How long, you, you were the head coach of the junior college program for a couple of years? Two years, yeah. When the transition was yeah. made, the, the board at Cumberland decided, yeah. we need to try to go back to four years yeah. still. That was the only strategy that they could figure out how we could stay open if we went to a four-year status, which was a great move for them uh, because to survive as a private two-year college is very, very difficult. I think us and maybe Hawassi was the only one. Yeah. Hawassi, no, no, I don't think it's in, I'm not sure if they're in existence. Yeah, I don't even know anymore. So we, we made that move and I was just very, very disappointed because I love the JUCO uh, part, I love the JUCO baseball. And I didn't didn't really like the move. I didn't say anything about it, but I just embraced it, and we took the next step, and we became instantly successful. And and our JUCO team at that time, we got it. We were ranked in the top ten. Uh, uh, we were thirty eight and five at one time, uh, and we thought we had a we had a really good ball club. Uh, all those players except one stayed with me, and we admit we added some recruits to that. We became good the first year. Which, which was a big deal getting those guys to stay hitched yep. when during that transition because there was a time you couldn't play for a championship. You were out there pretty much on your own just trying to play midweeks when you could and pick up some weekend games. Well, we had, you know, get those guys. We had, we had four-year colleges recruiting our players, and we were going to a four-year status. So that yeah. was... And we just, you know, they could do what they wanted to do. Joe Monica, for example, you know, Middle Tennessee wanted him real bad. And I think probably University of Kentucky. Uh, Joe was a heck of a player. You remember him. Oh, yeah. And and Joe decides to stay with me. And when a player of that magnitude decides to stay with you, that influences other people. We lost one pitcher, left-hand pitcher at the Middle Tennessee because they had his major, which is criminal justice. Everybody else stayed with us. We added some recruits, including Jim McGuire, and we became good the first year. We became very good. And those two teams, 84 and 85, I know were championship caliber team, but we couldn't play anywhere. Eventually you got into what was the old VSAC, Volunteer yeah. State Athletic Association with Belmont, Lipscomb, Trevecca, that group. And, and when we come back in the eighth inning, We'll talk about some of those formative years in yep. the old BSAC. I'm Tommy Bryant. We'll be back with more on Nine Innings with Coach Woody Hunt.